Welcome back to Quick Tips. Today I'm going to show you how to use Hyper-V to create a virtual machine in under five minutes. This is an incredibly simple way to get up and running with a Linux VM or a Windows VM without having to go out and download any files, without having to know any configuration details. Without any further ado, let's jump right in. The first thing you need to do is make sure that you're running a professional SKU of Windows. You can find that in the System Information app by searching up System Information. And the first thing will tell you your edition of Windows 10. I am running Education, which is a professional SKU of the operating system. If you're running something like Home Edition, unfortunately, you're not going to be able to enable Hyper-V. The next thing you're going to have to search up in the Start menu is Turn Windows Features On or Off. Once you go to that, it'll bring you to a Control Panel pane, which will give you all all the different Windows features that can be enabled under Windows 10 and the one that we're going to have to enable is Hyper-V. Once you select that feature then you can press OK and then Windows will search for the required files to add in Hyper-V. Then after this Windows will more than likely restart and then you should have the Hyper-V app enabled. So once it's done adding all the features then you can press close and then if you go down to the start menu and search for Hyper-V that search should pop up and as you can see I can open up the Hyper-V manager right here. Now if this is not working for you or if you do not see the Hyper-V feature, that might be because you do not have virtualization enabled in your motherboard's BIOS. This specific feature changes per motherboard. What I recommend you do is search up how you're supposed to do that for your motherboard manufacturer or for your computer OEM. Once you get everything up and running, the next thing that you have to do is go down to the right pane and click Quick Create. And then this is going to show you a pane where you can select an operating system. There are many different both Ubuntu options and also Windows options. So I'm going to choose Ubuntu 20.04 and then just click on the create virtual machine button. And then what this is going to do is it's going to download an image of Ubuntu. You don't have to create any ISO files. You don't have to burn any USB drives. And then after the disk image download, it's going to extract that image from the archive, which makes it so that you only have to download three gigabytes of files, even though the Ubuntu image is around four to five gigabytes. Once it extracts, that image it has successfully created the virtual machine so you can either edit the settings or you can pop right into the VM. I'm going to click on edit settings just to show you the default settings that they have so for me they've set it to only two gigabytes of RAM. You can easily change that by clicking on the memory tab and increasing it so I'm going to increase that to about 20 gigabytes around there it's not exact and right now it's going to dynamically allocate the amount of RAM based on the virtual machine. I'm going to leave that as default. You can really change the amount of RAM that you want to give the VM based on how much RAM you have for your system. And also it looks like eight virtual processors that looks pretty good for what I have. It has also created a virtual hard disk which is going to dynamically allocate based on how many files you put into your VM. And it looks like it's also going to do the automatic networking configuration. So all that looks good. I'm going to click on apply and I'm going to connect to my virtual machine. And the way that Hyper-V works is it's going to all connect right through this interface. So all you have to do to turn it on is press the start button or click on start right there. Now, if you get an error somewhere around here, that might also be to do with virtualization in your BIOS. So again, just make sure that that is enabled. And this first boot might take longer than it normally takes because right now all we've done is extract the image. So it might still be trying to do some configuration or installation in the background. Hyper-V is pretty good about not taking up too many resources since it is built into the Windows operating system. And that's why I always recommend using Hyper-V over something like VirtualBox or even VMware. So now it looks like I'm already ready to boot into the Linux operating system. We have gotten right into Ubuntu. Go through the first time setup, select the time zone, and I give it a short password when I'm doing my terminal work. And so right now it looks like it is not taking up too much of the CPU and it's also not taking up too much of the memory. In fact, Microsoft Edge is taking up more memory. And a quick editor's note, you can actually change the amount of CPU a Hyper-V virtual machine can use. So if you go into the settings of any of your virtual machines, and this is specific to each virtual machine, by the way, and go to the processor settings, you can also allocate the reserve for the virtual machine, which means I want at least like 20% of the CPU. Premiere or any other programs can only use up to 80% of the CPU when this VM is running. You can also change the limit of resources within the specific virtual 
virtual machine. So that means only 80% or 60% or whatever you set here can be allocated to resources within that VM. And if you look here, the things that are grayed out, that is the amount of total system resources this virtual machine can use at a time. Right now, only 40% of the CPU resources on the host can be used. I'm just going to make this full screen right now by double clicking on the top. There are some issues with the way that Microsoft has set up this disk image for Ubuntu, but the operating system is working perfectly. The mouse is working and other USB devices, as long as you pass them through, they should be able to work also. There are more advanced configurations that you can do with this, but just basically, if you want to get an app up and running right now, this is all that you really need. Biggest problem with this though, is that it does not have 3D acceleration and it also does not automatically fit the full screen resolution. And I believe that you have to change those configuration settings in the bootloaders. And I've only really had that problem with Linux operating systems. There are some really great tutorials that I'll link in the description that should be able to get you up and running to get this 100% configured. And now that we've gotten into the virtual machine, we can look at some of the hardware that it is using. It does recognize itself as a virtual machine. It does also recognize the processor, the 20 gigabytes of memory that I passed through to it. Also, it does have all of our disks, including our virtual disk. And it looks like it has some other partitions listed under it that it did by default. And then finally, it has the wired ET80 network interface connection. If I go and ping google.com, it works perfectly fine. It has 100% of a connection right out of the box to your external network. So thank you all for watching this video. I hope that it was helpful and I'll catch you all in the next quick tips. Bye-bye.